see get the TV turned off and the recorder started. And mm -hmm. the, you can the, edit it though. The CD. <laughs> it's already started. Okay, awesome. <laughs> so that's your TV on one day, so it's going to take me a couple of years to trust it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a detail person, something yeah. bouncing around <laughs> over my head besides the Holy Spirit. All right, you good, Ben? Awesome. So I want to welcome the internet family. Um, God has spoken to me to teach a series of messages. Thank you for your giving. It's the first of the month, and uh, we appreciate that. Um, I, this is probably one of the first times I've put a warning label on a message. <laughs> so this message has a warning label, so... Once we start, you need to leave now. Amen? The warning label says, if you want to stay lukewarm and a baba sucker, don't watch this video. That's, you can leave. You, you got a chance, because once you hear this, you know, it won't return void. So the title of my message is Antichrist Worship. I'm starting to write a book entitled Antichrist Worship. I just finished uh, writing Holy Spirit Deposit. It's been done edited, so it'll be sent to the publisher probably this week. Uh, so I'm gonna lay a foundation because we're gonna be on this topic for a few weeks. We're gonna talk about beast worship, demonic worship, and uh, that's all in the Bible. And we're rapidly coming to that season in the world. 25% of the Bible is prophecy. So 25% from Genesis to Revelation is prophecy. Maybe not all end time prophecy, but, you know, if a surgeon came in and said, you know what, I got to cut you open today, Sherry. I skipped 25% of my education, but I think we'll be okay. <laughs> I, I think you'd hope that they weren't putting the medicine in to put you to sleep. So just like as Christians, most of us, don't know the 25% of prophecy and you're very limited because in the end times the biggest witnessing tool you're going to have is prophecy because people even the unsaved are going what's going on what's happening and guess what the bible has all the answers 25% of the bible is prophecy we will not know the day or the hour but we're going to know the season only God knows the day or the hour. I was sitting there shaving this morning, and God just starts hitting me with all these end time downloads. All of you could just be doing something simple, and that's when God's going to speak to you. When you're sitting there just doing something, ladies, shaving your legs, hopefully. <laughs> If, if you don't shave your legs, that's okay. There you go. <laughs> I can see it. They're like, where does he come up with this stuff? It's the mundaneness of life. Amen? Amen. God can speak to you in that moment. We, we think angels have to sing and we have to be in this special quiet moment. Um, you know, God wants to barge into your apathy. <clears throat> We will not know the day or the hour, but we'll know the season. And we have been being warned for the last hundred years. From 1900 into the early 2000s, there's these major, major warnings happening. Last hundred years was called the century of war. That's a major, major sign of the end times. The Bible warns us that Antichrist will always rise up when he hears of wars and rumors of wars. Satan is preparing his man of peace. That's why the harvesting of souls for Jesus has accelerated. Uh, Elizabeth, you weren't there on Tuesday night. You asked the question, then why is the American church dying? If all this harvesting is going on, I'm glad you asked that. I'm going to help explain it. You know, I'm sitting in Rome. Missy and I went to Rome for 10 days. And I'm sitting on the bed in Rome. 
And all of a sudden this advertisement comes on looking for the Christ on TV in Italy. And I thought, what? And they said he's about this old. This is his ethnic background. This is his background. We're looking for the Christ. He's alive right now. And I went, my goodness, on European television, there is a group looking for the Christ. And I thought, Chris, wow. And the Bible says that the Antichrist will come out of Europe. So already God is warning that this nation is searching for the Christ. They should get you excited. Amen? Amen? Jesus said this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations. Then the end will come. A recent study concluded that 70% of the gospel that has been preached to the world has been during the last 100 years. 70% of the gospel that's been preached to the whole world has lapsed, happened in the last 100 years. It gets even better. In the last seven years, more of God's word has been preached worldwide than the last 2,000 years. Now, I'm a simple person, but when something starts accelerating to that point, something's getting ready to come to a conclusion. As I write this, in China alone, over 40,000 people a day are being saved. The amazing move of God that is spreading throughout the earth is a sign of the times we are living in. So I'm going to give you a couple of testimonies about China. I was sitting in a service listening to a gentleman just a couple years ago, late 70s. He snuck into China. He went to a mountainous region of China and had to go four hours up this rugged cliffs and mountains. Remember, Jesus is not tired. Marilyn Hickey's in her 80s, flying 24 hours, getting off a plane and preaching for three hours. Amen? Amen. Jesus is not tired. He's not fatigued. So he gets to the base of this mountain, and there's a small girl, probably about 80 pounds, and there's a man, 90 pounds. We're in China. And he's got 60 pounds of books. Because in America, we're theological giants. We have to have all of our books. We have to be educated. So they begin to go up this path, and he begins to get fatigued. And the 90-pound man says, listen, give the girl your books. I'll carry you the rest of the three hours. And the American macho man said, not savage, American macho man you get that later, Internet. <laughs> so I'm not going to have this guy carry me. So they finally make it up four hours in the mountain. They get there. 1,500 people are standing at the base waiting. Standing. So he preaches immediately for two hours. No rest. No eating. No drinking. He preaches for two hours straight. And he says, okay, that's cool. And they said, no, we need another 10 hours, at least 10 hours. No building, no shelter, no pews, nothing, standing. So he goes, I got to go to the bathroom. So he walks out the trees, comes back. Melody preaches another hour. And he looks down. He's completely exhausted. Little American missionary, Tai Tai. And he looks down at this little girl, and she's the only one with the Bible. And all of a sudden, he said, why are you the only person here with the Bible? She goes, because I pastor this church. And she goes, I pastor 70 more the same size. He goes, how old are you? She said, I'm 20. She pastors over 70,000 people. With a Bible and no buildings. We are toast in America. We're toast. 
There's no hunger. We get a little hangnail. Oh, I can't go fellowship. Oh, I can't participate. I'm going to back that up with some scripture. Any little thing, and we're done. You know, right now we're preaching to the world. Second testimony. He said while he was up there in those mountains, they had to baptize people at two in the morning in the rivers. It was winter. Molly had to break the ice out of the rivers with sledgehammers because it was illegal to baptize there. It was illegal to hear about Christ. And he said we were baptizing people all morning at dark with it snowing in the ice. We are spoiled, rotten, rotten. We live in a post-Christian nation. Just recently, I met with a man that smuggled Bibles into China. Met with him here in Klamath. He said, Randy, we got in, we got past, we had 300 Bibles hidden in a box. We get to this cinder block church, probably seated maybe 60, 70 people. The worship starts, and he said, Randy, we had over 1,500 people show up. He said, Randy, so many people could not fit in there. Elizabeth, the other over 1,000 squeezed in and put their hands against the cinder block to try to hear about Jesus. Just to try to hear some teaching about Jesus. They have to hide a book of John page in a baggie in their lips to sneak it into caves. To teach about Jesus. This is now. Why are 40,000 people a day getting saved there when we have a Bible on every shelf? Because they're desperate. Their whole focus for the day is rice and water and Jesus. And Jesus first. He said, Randy, we had about 1,500 people. We started giving out the Bibles. It was like we were giving out desperation. He said, Randy, we gave out the Bibles. And when we got done, the box was still full. So the next time you start bawling and squalling, woe is me, woe of my childhood, woe of my past marriage, woe this. Get on a stinking plane, take your behind to China, and don't come back until you get your act together. Man, I'm ready. See ya, wouldn't want to be ya. And God goes, no, Rand, you got to stay here in lukewarmville. And beat the snot out of the lukewarm church. Okay. Wow, that went by fast. It's exhilarating. In my mind, I kept thinking, what was the trigger a hundred years ago? And how does that tie into Antichrist? And the Lord told me, Randy, study Hitler's life. So for the last week, I have studied Adolf Hitler's life. I was already very, very familiar, but God needed to give me specific prophetic insight. I don't consider myself a prophet. I consider myself a watchman. A watchman. That's why mundane conversations, it's not that I just get agitated because urgency is on my mind. Prophetic people can't hang out with a lot of people. Because the lolly lolly da doesn't work. Randy, study Hitler's life and I will give you insight of what is coming on the earth and how an antichrist spirit is accelerating. So I studied 
and my eyes were open to the urgency of the hour we are living in. 100 years ago, Hitler was 30 years old. 100 years ago, he was a 30-year-old young man. And this is the first public statement newspaper in writing at 30 years old this was the first documented statement that he made on september 16 1919, 1919 hitler issued his first written comment on the so-called jewish question he defined the jews as a race and not a religious community he characterized the effect of the jewish presence in Europe as a race tuberculosis. He said these people are the tuberculosis of the world. People you better wake up a hundred years ago. An antichrist spirit. Well, Randy, oh, you better keep coming or watch it on video for the next few weeks. See, nobody owns me. I don't care if it's one of us in here, because that right there is dangerous. And identify the initial goal of a German government to be discriminatory legislation against the Jews. And this is what he said. The ultimate goal must definitely be the removal of the Jews altogether. Whoop, 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 whoop. In the German churches, as the cattle cars were rickety, rickety, rickety going by their churches, they were singing Amazing Grace. Rickety, rickety, rickety. And they were just worshiping the Lord. It's the same thing today. I wrote a little side note here this morning. Hitler and the German government in 1941 designated it the final solution. Physically annihilate the Jews. Physically annihilate them. Don't just restrict them physically. This was one of the great signs of the acceleration. Little food for thought. Billy Graham was born in 1918. Little food for thought. Billy Graham was born in 1918. Billions have heard the gospel through television from one man. One man. Can you be that one person? Or you got to suck the nipple? Can you be that one person or your little measly life? Your little cares of the world are so much greater than God. That that's all that consumes your mind. Or can you be shaving your legs? And God give you all this information that I've never, I got sticky notes here, man. <laughs> this ain't even for you this week. Yeah, I'm a little fired up. Hitler exterminated 66% of the Jews in Europe by 1945. Six million. Satan raised up an antichrist. In the 40s, he thought, let's get it over now. He already knew what was coming. Satan knows Bible prophecy better than the most expert theologian on the planet. The reason he raised up Hitler is he already saw what was happening. He saw the acceleration. But in 1948, the clock started ticking. On May 14, 1948, Israel became a sovereign nation three years after the end of World War II. So three years after this extermination, God raises up Israel. And then things really started accelerating. 
Next acceleration was 1967. In 1967, Jerusalem becomes the official capital in Israel. And Elizabeth, you, you got Billy Graham's born. And then all of a sudden, here's the big, big kicker. In 1967, Reinhard Bonnke goes to Africa. 75 million recorded decisions for Christ. 1967. 1967, God goes, I'm going to go to the hungry. I'm going to go to the desperate. They wait in line for eight hours for porridge being cooked in a rusted 55-gallon barrel. And they get to the end of the line, Molly, and guess what? It ran out. You know where God had to go? He had to go there. Because we're fat and happy. We don't have any money, but boy, we can buy stuff that's not good for us. Right? Yeah. Can't leave now. Maybe afterwards. God is sending his harvesters out quickly. Billy Graham and Reinhard Bonnke have had services of one million people in one service. One million people in one service. I think the state of Oregon has a little over three million people in it. The whole state. And these guys in one service. Because the acceleration is happening. And we're asleep at the wheel. Guys suck on our baba. This harvest cannot be contained in lukewarm country club churches. No, 70,000 people in the mountains of China are being led by a 20-year-old girl with a Bible. A 20-year-old with a Bible. No education. No discipleship. Holy Spirit. She doesn't realize she's an apostle. The Laodicean church is alive and well in America, but God is still in control, and He is harvesting where there is hunger. And people are being baptized in ice rivers at two in the morning in China. So we'll close with some scripture in Luke 14, 15. I titled this, Go Out Quickly. I'm not worried about convincing people in America. We're, we're too busy. We're too busy. Any little thing comes up. We're not available. Luke 14, 15 through 24. But God's asked me to preach from this pulpit from 1940, from Mitchell Street, to the world. Luke 14, 15 through 24. Luke chapter 14, 15 through 24. When one of those at the table with him heard this, he said, Blessed is the one who will eat at the feast of the kingdom of God. Jesus replied, A certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. This is happening right now. This is the acceleration. God is inviting people to the great banquet. At that time of the banquet, he sent his servants to tell those who had been invited, Come, for everything is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. This is why 1,500 pastors are going to quit this month. This is why 75 churches are going to close this week. Because these poor ministers are just trying to stay on fire and all we hear is excuses. The first said, I just bought a field. I must go and see it. Please excuse me. The materialistic love of money will jeopardize. Another said, I just bought five quads and a couple of snowmobiles. <laughs> And I'm on the way to try them out. Please excuse me. 
as Steve Martin would say. Still another said, I just got married. Oh, we'll pray for you. <laughs> I can't come. The servant came back and reported this to his master. So was that happening in 1919? It had already started happening. Major denominations were being born. Satan was divvying up the church. That's why Satan knew 100 years ago, let's get it on, man. Then the owner of the house became angry and ordered, go out quickly into the streets and the alleys of the towns. Reinhardt, go to Africa. 20-year-old girl, go to the mountains of China. Bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. Sir, the servant said, what you ordered has been done, but there is still room. Then the master told him, go out to the roads and the country lanes and the mountains of China and compel them to come in so that my house will be full. I tell you, not one of those who were invited will get the taste of my banquet. God is sick of begging people to be consistent. He's sick of people going, excuse me, I'm too busy. Excuse me, I don't feel like it. When he was on the cross, you were on his mind. When you're getting tested, when your life sucks, what's on your mind? You. You. When the going gets tough, the focus needs to be on Christ. Amen. And man, if you're lukewarm and disobedient to Christ and you're getting your butt kicked, boy, you got big problems. It's one thing to get a butt kicking when you're on fire and focused. It's another thing when you're just la di da di da got the little milk dribbling down your mouth, came and suck on the nipple and keep it in your mouth. Rand, what's this suck nipple stuff? For the internet family that don't know, the Bible says you should be teachers by now. You should be discipling people. You live in a nation where there's hours and hours of teaching. Ah, ta, ta. What? What? Why are we tired? Because we're constantly taking in information that doesn't glorify God. I'm not angry. But the Bible says judgment's going to begin in the church. But the pastors are own. Can you imagine if a pastor getting paid by a congregational vote? Board vote? He's toast. If you're watching this morning and you need to receive Christ, just go to lastdaysharvestministries.com. Watch the Life After Death video. We've had over 40,000 people around the world watch that video. Facebook and YouTube. Lord, forgive us, man. <laughs> forgive us. Lord, forgive us that we see the signs of the time and we're part of the problem. We're not part of the solution. Father, forgive us of becoming codependent, Lord, on the cares of this life. Father, forgive us of becoming codependent. And Lord, then entertaining the people around us that just all we talk about is the codependency. It's going to be so easy for the world to worship the Antichrist. And I'm going to teach you that in the next few weeks. Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you that you're faithful. And Father, forgive us that we live in a post-Christian nation, Lord. Just like Europe, Father, forgive us that the major evangelistic denomination, Lord, in our nation, I don't need to name it, has closed 500 churches in the last 20 years. Lord, forgive us that we've elevated the mountain and we brag on how big our problems are constantly but we don't say in the mountain how big our God is. Lord, we just repent 
of being a mockery to the world. The reason they want to move here, Lord, is because the great Babylon, the great harlot, Lord, the great financial empire is here, Lord. Lord, we just call America, Lord, to repent. And it's not the unsaved, Lord, it's the church. The church has become wicked, it's become selfish, it's become Laodicean, Lord. And Lord, as long as there's breath in my lungs, I'm not going to go with the flow. I'm not going to go with the flow. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Awesome. Have a happy day.